Hey everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We're Tom and Melissa, and we're really happy to have you here with us for this video. Today, we are roasting a butternut squash. Now this is something that a lot of people shy away from. They're not sure how to peel it, they're not sure how to cut it up, they aren't really sure what to do with it as far as cooking it. So I thought we would roast this today and let you see how we enjoy having butternut squash. Bef besides needing a butternut squash, and you need one that's roughly three pounds. This one's like almost three pounds, not quite, but close. But besides needing a butternut squash, you're also going to need one tablespoon of olive oil, three tablespoons of pure maple syrup. It just will not work as well if you use something like pancake syrup because it's not really real maple syrup. So make sure you're using real maple syrup. Then you need two teaspoons of kosher salt. If you use table salt, something like just Morton's salt, you will need to cut this to about one teaspoon. But if you have kosher salt, two teaspoons. You need one teaspoon of ground cinnamon and you need one half teaspoon of black pepper. You're also going to need a baking sheet with a rimmed edge and I like to use parchment paper on it just to keep anything from sticking and to make cleanup easier. Why would we not make our lives easier? All right. Let's get started processing this butternut squash. The first thing you do is cut off the very top and the bottom. You just want to, and I, I just roll mine. It just kind of makes it easier to cut off. So I just roll it and then cut through it. And that can go to the compost pile. Then we're going to separate this bottom part that looks like a, a ball from the neck part. And that just makes it a little easier to process. So just right down through that. Now we need to peel it. We've got to get this outer skin off of it. And I have found the easiest way to do it is with a vegetable peeler. And all you can do is just peel it away. Now. You're going to see that underneath there is some green. We really need to get that off too. So we need to go all the way down until we hit the orange flesh because that green part is going to be bitter and you don't want that. So just get rid of that. Sometimes I think it's easier to do several swipes and then go back and get rid of that green part. This butternut squash came from one of my former students. Her name is Ashley. One of my, dare I say, former favorite former students. We're not allowed to say that. That's right. Teachers can't have favorites. But wait a minute. We're not really full-time <laughs> teachers, so. Yeah, she was one We're of retired. <laughs> Ashley is such a really cool, neat person. She's a beekeeper. She's a full-time mom. She homeschools her kids. And they are the cutest kids. They are so adorable. Their names are Margaret, Anna, and Ellie. And they are just the cutest things ever. And I'm so proud of Ashley for taking on all she does, taking on beekeeping and being a full-time mom and homeschooling. and We've actually had some of her honey before and it was really good. Oh my gosh, her honey is so good. But you know, she takes really good care of her bees and that makes a difference, I think. So now we'll just peel the bottom part of the squash and same thing. We're going to make sure we get off that green because it is bitter. So, Margaret, Anna, Ellie, if you're watching, 
This is the squash that your mom brought to us. Actually, she brought us three. And this is just one of them. And we sure do appreciate that. Apparently, these have great value in your garden too, according to Ashley. Right, Ashley planted these and said she didn't even really like them or know what to do with them. But if you plant butternut squash, according to Ashley, around the perimeter of your garden, raccoons will not come into your garden. Hmm, who knew? So besides being delicious and nutritious, and they are nutritious, they're full of vitamin C and vitamin B, but besides that, they're really good at protecting your other plants in the garden. So there is that. Okay, this will all go to the compost pile. Yeah, I should have. Hang on and I'll do that. Okay. Now, inside this ball part, there are some seeds that we need to get out. So we're just going to cut it in half. And we're going to take a spoon and scoop these out. So we're just gonna go right under there. It is a little tough. But These will not go in the compost tray. No, no, you can't put seeds in your compost pile. Might give these to my neighbor because he loves to grow things. I don't know if he'll want butternut squash or not, but we'll ask. If he doesn't want them, he can get rid of them. Okay, there's one side. And you do want to get all that, I don't know what that is, that stringy part. You want to get all that out there. It's kind of like the inside of a pumpkin. That's what it reminded me of. Well, it's, it's a squash. Mm -hmm. A pumpkin's a squash too, so, yeah. Very similar. You just want to get all that out there. If you've never processed a butternut squash. Don't let it intimidate you. It's just a squash. It's not a monster. It's very simple. You saw what I just did. My goodness, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Okay. Now, I'm going to save these for Ernie. I should have had something to put those on. Just lay them right here beside of us. Just move those over there. And I'll ask him later if he wants those. They're slippery little suckers. You know what? I bet we could roast those and eat them. I bet that would be good. Yeah, like pumpkin seeds, uh -huh. pepitas. Ooh, well, Ashley brought me two more. So I'll give Ernie some and we'll try roasting some. Now, you want to take what's here and cut it into about one inch cubes. So we're just going to cut it into about one inch pieces and then cut those into about one inch pieces. And we just throw those in a big bowl. We will put the rest of our stuff into. See, it's not hard to do. And I bet some of you have processed and cooked butternut squash. And you probably have a favorite way to cook them. So if you do, let us know. I have two more of these, and I'm willing to try something new with them. I really think I'd like to try a butternut squash soup. Didn't I that sound did good? say she liked it with soups. Mm -hmm. She did say that was her favorite way to have it, but she didn't act like she was a huge fan of anything butternut squash, did she? <laughs> <laughs> Which I understand. Sometimes... 
They have favorites and sometimes you have things you don't care for as much. Okay. And we're going to take a break while you do the other piece. I don't care. If you want to stay, you can. If you want to take a break, you can. I don't think it'll take long. Okay. We'll just stick with you. Okay. So right down the middle. Lay those down. Get them into about one inch strips. That may not be quite wide enough. Yeah, it's close. Okay. And then just put each of those into about one inch pieces. This in half. Whoop, run away. Got him. Get this one in half. We are going to roast these in a 400 degree oven. So you will want to get your oven preheated when while you're processing these. We'll leave these just a little bigger. Preheat your oven, 400 degrees. Let it get started. So when you get your your um, butternut squash processed, it'll be ready to go. Okay. And your pieces don't have to be perfect. They just need to be approximately the same size so that they all bake evenly. You don't want some that are not done that are still a little raw while the others are overdone. So just make them approximately the same size. That way they'll all bake at the same time. Whoop. Some of those just want to run away, don't they? Now, move this out of the way, and we'll start adding our other ingredients. So we have a little bit of olive oil, we're just going to put that on and stir it up, try to get a little on each piece. And here comes my favorite part. Pure maple syrup. And you want to make sure that every piece has some maple syrup on it. Actually, it'd be nice if they were all coated with maple syrup. Because that makes it really good. So, and that maple syrup is in the bottom, some of it. So, let's just keep tossing and make sure that everything gets coated. You want to make sure every piece has that maple syrup on it. All right, now let's sprinkle in our salt. I may not use all that. Well, that that seems like a lot. Let's let's leave a little out just in case. And our cinnamon. Ooh, I love cinnamon. I know you do. That's why I put it all in there. And just a half teaspoon of pepper. And now let's toss that around. Get it on every piece. They really do. Yep. What's it look like? Fall? Just around the corner. Butternut squash is a late summer, early fall thing to have. So now we're going to take our. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> trying to get a picture. Doesn't that look good? It does. It looks really okay. good. Okay. Now, we don't, we, what we want to do is to scoop these out and put them in a single layer. You do not want them piled up on top of each other. And really, it's kind of best if you leave a little room between them so that the hot air can get between them and cook them. So, you know, you might have a couple that are touching, but if you can, just kind of separate them. Kind of like your kids in the back seat of the car when they're picking on each other. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> Sounds like I know about kids being in the back seat picking on each other. 
Did our kids ever do that? Honestly, not really. Not really, did they? <laughs> our kids always got along. I don't remember ever having to separate them. And you know, our kids are still best friends. It really is a blessing. Our kids love each other. Okay. Now. I noticed you had a little bit left in the... Yeah, there is a little bit there. I'm probably... I don't know. Should I drizzle it on there? I can't remember from the past what you've been with it. I don't think I did. I don't remember doing that. I don't think I'm going to. They look really wonderful right now. Aren't they pretty? They look like fall. Turnover. I like them laying down more so that they touch the sheet. I think they bake a little better if they're touching all laying down. I'm trying to separate them here. Okay, now our oven's preheated. So we're going in for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we're going to flip them over. I'll just take a spatula and go under them and flip them. And then we're going back in for another 10 to 15 until we can take a knife and go through them without any resistance. So into the oven we go for 15 minutes. Our butternut squash was in for 15 minutes. I took it out and flipped every one of them over, put them back in the oven for another 10 minutes and now I think they're ready to come out. Turn this off. Don't those look great? They do, they smell so nice. And I think I am gonna take this extra salt I had and just sprinkle it over top of them now that they've come out. This is kosher salt, by the way, I think I did mention that. But if you have a problem with salt, if you're on a salt-restricted diet, by all means, feel free to leave the salt off of these. You do not have to use it. It does give a really good flavor, though, if you can have salt. Now, I'm sure that these are really hot. But I really wanna try one. So, all right, let's see. I've already burned the roof of my mouth on something else, so I really don't wanna burn it on this. Mmm. That is so good. They're soft, but they're not mushy at all. Perfect. I think that little bit of salt that I just put on there really helped them. I can just taste that salt. The cinnamon is great. Very good. Maybe. A little extra maple syrup drizzled over them. But that's wonderful. It's a great side dish. And you saw how easy it was. They're not hard to peel. They're not hard to chop up. So don't be afraid of a butternut squash. If you've never fixed one on your own, pick one up. Get one at a farmer's market or somewhere and fix it. We do appreciate those of you that have subscribed to our channel. Our channel's growing and we really do appreciate that you've hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, please do that for us. And there's a little notification bell right beside of it. it. Looks like a little dinner bell. If you'll click that in the word all, that just lets YouTube notify you every time we put up a new video so you never miss one. Also over on the other side, right below this video, if you would, please click the thumbs up. That just says you liked our video. Remember that right under this video, there is a box where you'll see the title of this recipe. If you click there where you see that title, that box will expand. Melissa always puts the written recipe for that dish in that box under each video and our contact information. So feel free to click on that box and look at the recipe. 
All right, we do appreciate you watching and we appreciate those of you who have subscribed. But most of all, we want you to remember that you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.